In this barren landscape, one ruined superstructure overshadows everything. The first thing that strikes you about this place is the sheer scale of the building. You're talking about a space that has the same interior area as five football fields. Behind shattered windows and icy staircases, the building hides hundreds of derelict rooms. From the outside, it's not obvious what this place is. And when you get inside, the mystery remains. There's so much in there. This is essentially a tiny fishing village, and it's dominated by one gigantic building. Why would a town this small need a building this enormous? It may still be standing, but this vast construction has been ravaged by the elements. It snows 22 feet a year here. That's a thousand times the national average. Nature's spent years hammering away at this place. Cold, harsh winds beating every inch of it. But this isn't a weak building, and it feels like something far more powerful than just weather has struck this place. This building would find itself at the center of one of the 20th century's greatest conflicts, playing a part in averting nuclear war, as well as coming face to face with one of nature's gravest dangers. This mammoth construction may look like it's in the middle of nowhere, but at a certain point in the 20th century, Alaska became a hotbed of military activity. Prior to 1940, there is a very small population in Whittier, and then World War II comes. Alaska is vulnerable. It is seen as a possible place that might be attacked by the likely enemy, which is the Japanese. The American military began building up their presence in Alaska. And as the Second World War came to an end, this remote northern territory gained a new strategic importance. At this point, Alaska had been part of the U.S. for less than a century. In fact, Alaska used to be Russian territory. It wasn't bought by the U.S. until 1867. It's this historic link that offers a clue to the purpose of this monolithic building. At the northernmost edge of the Pacific, Alaska occupies the area between North America and Russia. We tend to think of these two countries as being miles apart, on different sides of the globe from each other. But from a different perspective, you can see they're practically neighbors. And as tensions rose between the superpowers, the threat, however small, of a Russian attack on Alaska focused American attention on this remote region. But what if it became a Soviet territory? Suddenly it would look very different and would be a very dangerous prospect for the US. In a worst case scenario, the USSR gains control of Alaska. They've got a foothold for launching troops, launching missiles, launching planes. You don't want the Soviet Union with territory just off your northern border. In 1950, the Americans sprung into action and built this, the Buckner Building, a Cold War US military facility. It would play a crucial role in America's battle for survival against the Soviets. Brenda Tolman, a longtime Whittier resident, has lived in its shadow for nearly 40 years. Built in the early 50s and surplused out in 58, the building has had no maintenance in what, almost 70 years and still stands as strong probably as when it was built. The site in Whittier was constructed at the same time as a massive expansion of the U.S. Army. This one structure was designed to accommodate up to 1,000 soldiers or an entire battalion. What we're looking at here is what was once the largest building in Alaska. It is a vast complex. It's got six visible floors and then another basement level hidden away underneath. You will have your troops, you will have your medical support, people for security, your military police. 
It had accommodation, it had a canteen, it had a movie theater, it had a rifle range, it even had a bowling alley. Normally, in a U.S. Army post, these things are scattered over a large area. Here, you have them all concentrated in one place. Covering 275,000 square feet, this enormous concrete bunker was a city under a single roof, so that if it came to it, none of the 1,000 troops would ever have to leave. Because in this place, you get such a massive snowfall during the year, it made perfect sense to put everything into one building. It was crucial to the U.S. that the Buckner building could withstand the worst of the Alaskan weather. The reason Whittier was built was because it's an ice-free, deep-water port. It was built to bring supplies to interior Alaska by rail. 95% of everything consumed in Alaska is brought in. 47% of that still comes through the port of Whittier. This was the U.S. military's primary route into Alaska. Troops, weapons, equipment, all had to come through here. It needed to be up and running 365 days a year. Otherwise, the whole operation would be at risk. The Buckner Building allowed the U.S. to maintain control of and access to Alaska. As the threat of an aerial attack by the Soviets increased, this territory became even more crucial to America's survival. In the Cold War equation, Alaska is very important because one of the best routes to attack the United States with nuclear weapons is over the north. A series of radar stations were built to warn the U.S. if Soviet planes, potentially carrying nuclear weapons, were hurtling towards their shores. And many of them were in Alaska. Without Alaska, any attack coming from that direction wouldn't be picked up until it was too late, leaving very little time to react and possibly a deadly scenario to follow. But these defenses could only be maintained if American forces and supplies could reach them via Whittier and the Buckner Building. This was incredibly well built. Thick concrete walls, solid structural foundations. It was designed to survive whatever the Soviets or nature could throw at it. Would an attack by the Russians leave the Buckner Building in the line of fire? By the end of the 1950s, weapon technology had advanced dramatically. The invention of intercontinental ballistic missiles meant the Soviets could launch a nuclear attack on the US from thousands of miles away. So why go through the extraordinary expense and trouble of maintaining this massive military facility on the edge of nowhere? In 1960, the military moved out of Whittier, and the city under one roof was left empty. In the end, it wasn't the Cold War which put Buckner's engineering to the test. In 1964, a natural disaster devastated Alaska. Whittier is hit by the largest earthquake in U.S. history, 9.2 on the Richter scale. Tsunami over 40 feet kills 139 people, 13 of them in Whittier. But despite this devastation, the building survives. The ground moved for three minutes and the building stayed up. They built this thing right. Today, the Buckner building is derelict. But this massive feat of engineering is still standing, a monument to America's determination to defend itself, even in the harshest of conditions. <laughs>